What's up guys, my name is Mike Perea. For those of you guys watching for the first time, welcome. And for those of you returning, welcome back. I want to talk to you about a part of landscape photography that I think is very important. And it involves one piece of gear that we all bring with us. This guy right here. Although it is a great tool for watching Perea photography videos on YouTube, I want to talk about some apps that I use that are really amazing for landscape photography. This video is part of a collaboration with some very talented photographers from all over the world right here on YouTube. If you'd like to see what they're up to, the link to the playlist is in the description below. Now, let's jump right into the apps. Uh, weather apps can be extremely unreliable, frustrating, and you have to monitor them because they often change daily and hourly. But I found two apps that I really like that I find give really good information, they're reliable, and it's information that's really relevant to us as landscape photographers. Now the first is called Medio Blue. It's a free app and it was actually created in Chris's hometown at the University of Basel in Switzerland. There are a few really handy features that I like about this app. Uh, we're gonna take a look at the Grand Canyon. You can see here, it just shows a general overlook of you know, the days, the, the temperature highs and lows. And this is nice to know, you know, just a general outlook on the conditions. But when you really want to get down to the nitty gritty on what is great about this app, uh, if you click on the top left here, you can see something called Meteograms. You click on that, what it shows you is both a five day outlook and a 14 day. I want to concentrate on this five day outlook. And if you zoom in and look, it shows you uh, the cloud cover and the altitude, which is extremely important. If you want to do things like predict colorful skies, I find that this app and this feature alone is, is absolutely brilliant. So if you zoom in here, you can look on Monday, uh, it's showing here really dark clouds, uh, which is 90 to 100% cloud cover based on the, the shade of gray. And because they're high altitude clouds, you can see up here, they're in the high altitude area. Monday morning for sunrise, looks like it's a really, really good chance of colorful skies. And then if you look on Monday night or Monday at sunset, uh, it's got some really high altitude clouds, but also maybe some medium high altitude clouds. So the likelihood of a colorful sunset is still pretty decent, but not as good as you would see on Monday uh, for sunrise because of, uh, you know, everything looks like it's high altitude compared to sunset when it's like you know, some medium and lower altitude clouds as well. Also, if you click on the top left again and you go under satellite, you can see a real-time view of which way the clouds are going and where the clouds are actually at. Just hit the play button down at the bottom right, and you can see today there's absolutely no clouds in the area. Everything is down in, in Mexico and in the, in the Gulf down there. The next weather app I want to show you guys is for the real weather nerds out there. It's called Radar Scope. This app I use predominantly for chasing monsoons here in Arizona in the summertime. All the professional storm chasers use it for things like Tornado Alley when they're chasing tornadoes. And this is, like I said, uh, a bit more complicated to use and it, you really got to be a nerd to want to use this if you're really into chasing storms and, and trying to figure out where the storms are going, lightning strikes, and chasing haboobs, which we do those big dust storms we have here in Arizona. This is a great app to do. And if you get the pro version, which is a paid, I think it, I want to say it's like $30 US a year, you can uh, join the spotters network. You can take a test after reading the, the material and, and doing the education and watching a couple of videos, you can take a test and become part of the spotters network, which you can see other uh, other spotters on the red, there's red dots, you can show where the locations of other spotters are, where they're at, you can report your location and you know what's happening if there's lightning or a tornado or a haboob or something, you can report that onto the app itself so other spotters can see what's going on in your location. And like I said, this is for the uh, the, the big time nerds. Wow, you geeks are good. Nerds, I would nerds. say nerds probably more. It's no big uh, deal, it's just, you know, yeah, I mean. You know. Understanding how tide affects the area you're photographing is extremely important, not only for your images, but for your safety. Whether the tide is rising or falling is very important when it comes to seascape photography. Knowing what the tide is doing uh, can mean a lot. If you're standing in a location like myself, I like to be up in the action. If you're up in the waves and the waves are crashing over you and you don't realize the tide is coming up instead of receding and you're not paying attention, it can get really dangerous really fast. And a lot of these locations like uh, the Oregon coast and Iceland and Hawaii, they have these sneaker waves that they'll really catch you off guard if you're not paying attention. So more than anything, 
this app is great for safety and it's called Magic Seaweed. It's actually a, a, an app geared more towards surfers, but it's important for us as landscape photographers as well. Magic Seaweed is great because you can search dates in the future, whether it's days or weeks or months ahead of time, you can see uh, what the tide is doing. If you were wanting to go out for a sunset, you can see where the tide is gonna be at that time. You know, for example, if I wanted to go to uh, the famous Thor's Well, which has that collapsed lava tube uh, where the waves come up and then if they fall back down providing this little waterfall. If I want to search for a date where uh, I need high tide for this to happen because if it's low tide uh, that, that feature and that event's not going to happen. So I want high tide for this and I want to get it at sunset. So I can search for dates where it's going to be high tide at sunset to get something like this. Now the next step I want to talk about is a photography specific app which is uh, Lightroom. Lightroom is essential for me, especially when I post to things like social media, uh, when I edit my photos on the computer and I move them, you know, I save them as a JPEG and then I save them on my phone. Uh, what I end up having to do is make these little adjustments, you know, changing color spaces and things like that. When I save to a JPEG and saving it to sRGB, uh, a lot of times, like I said, I, I need to maybe up the vibrance a little bit, maybe add a little contrast. So it's got a lot of the same features as Lightroom. Not all of them, but it does have a lot of them. And it now has the new masking uh, features that are in Lightroom are now on the app, which is fantastic. It's also great for cataloging and saving. I can create categories and create different types of collections and smart collections. So if I'm editing them uh, in one of these smart collections, it also updates on the uh, laptop or, or vice versa. So it's really nice, really handy, and a great way to both uh, organize all your photos as well as do those little tweaks and stuff before you upload to social media. Now, the very last app I wanna talk about is probably the most important and one that I use all the time, and that is Photo Pills. For those of you guys who have taken our Nightscape workshops, uh, we use these all the time. We teach you guys how to use a lot of the features on here. And for things like the Milky Way or planning uh, full moon shots, I wanna do a quick example of what I'm talking about. So let's say I want to go photograph a pier with the sun right in the middle of a pier. So you know those shots where you have, you're standing under the pier and you have all the columns going out into the ocean and then you want that sun setting right in the middle of the pier. Well, you can plan that trip to the day with this app. If I go into the planner, there's a really cool pier in San Diego at Pacific Beach. As I want to click on this uh, circle here so I can plot myself where I want to be. I can go to, let's say, February 15th, and let's take a look. So again, February 16th of 2022, I know that I can sit underneath that pier and I'm gonna get that exact shot with the sun setting, given that we have good conditions for it. I've used this in my Milky Way tutorials where I am trying to plan where the Milky Way is going to be using things like augmented reality, which is a fantastic feature. When you're on location, you're able to hold your phone up, you know, uses your GPS, hold your phone up, and uses augmented reality and be able to see where the sun is gonna rise, where the sun is gonna set, where the Milky Way core is gonna be, uh, where the moon is gonna be rising or setting, to be able to kind of fine tune things like composition and uh, really be able to plan your photos out to a tee, which is a, a super nice feature. Now, a couple of the other features that I'm just gonna kind of glance over real fast are things like the hyperfocal table. So if you're trying to get everything sharp in an image, this is a great thing to use, especially for beginners who don't maybe understand the relationship between app aperture and depth of field and where you're focusing in a photo. Uh, the hyperfocal table is really, really good for that. Also things like spot stars. This is um, making sure that you're choosing the perfect shutter speed to make those stars sharp. Because of the movement and rotation of the earth, what happens is if your shutter speed is a bit too long, you're going to see the stars starting to, sh uh, starting to streak. And this app here takes into consideration your the megapixel on the camera, uh, the lens you're using, and your focal length to determine what shutter speed is best for uh, those sharp stars. If you click on the interval, intervals table, it shows you what duration or what interval length you should use depending on your subject. For fast moving clouds, uh, you should have like a one second interval. For slow moving clouds, 10 seconds. Uh, that means taking a shot every 10 seconds. Uh, with the sun moving across the sky, you want it 20 to 30 seconds, so it's taking a shot every 20 to 30 seconds. 
and then the duration. In order to get some movement, you want to have like a two hour or four hour shooting time. So you're shooting every 20 to 30 seconds for four hours if you want to get that sun moving across the sky. Even things like sunflowers blooming, grass growing, uh, crowds of people, all these things uh, you can do. So it's a really handy little table to use there. If there's any app that I pr that I would recommend for you guys, it would be that Photo Pills app. Like I said, I use it on almost all of my workshops, especially the astrophotography workshop. That app is invaluable. And the, these all these apps are for Google and Mac, so it doesn't matter what phone you have, you can find them in your app store. I'll also put some links down in the description for these apps as well, so you guys can find them. If you're interested in seeing our most recent storm chasing video we mentioned earlier, click on this video here and we'll see you over there.